Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Shannon from Rockabout Sound. My flag that's hanging up on my wall just fell, so just completely ignore that. But anyways, we're gonna be making this growl bass using two times frequency modulation, and I'll tell you what's going on in the tutorial, but anyways, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So if you guys like this sound a lot, go ahead, drop a like. If you guys haven't already checked out the rest of our tuts, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know you want to. But anyways, this is a really dope ass tutorial, so stay tuned. So we're going to start off by initializing this patch. So first things first, let me apologize. I haven't posted in about a week. Now, I've been so busy lately. Um, please just excuse that. I mean, really, I haven't been that motivated, but I'm back on schedule, boys. Let's get it. So anyways, we're going to be using just... Uh, three oscillator setup so sub oscillator a and oscillator b so we're gonna be essentially the easiest way to think of this it's pretty weird but hear me out you guys know what the human centipede is right think of the human centipede but of frequency modulation now so we're gonna be using oscillator a oscillator b and the sub to be kind of running frequency modulation off of each other all right so first things first Oscillator B is going to be our host, all right? We're going to be using Oscillator B as our host for all the sound to be outputted to. So we're going to just turn on the level of both the sub and Oscillator A and Oscillator, you know, yeah, so just these two right here, as you can see. So we just get Oscillator B. So we're going to be using an analog BD sign, and sine waveforms are the best for using frequency modulation because look at how clean this is. It's just perfect for running, uh, running a signal off of it. So anyways, we're going to turn on frequency modulation from oscillator A, okay? And now we're starting to hear that signal from oscillator A. So from here, we're just going to turn on our LFO1 onto here. And we'll turn it to, let's say, what do you... We'll turn it to about 60% somewhere around here. Yeah, that should be good, right? Um, Oh, I'm on the wavetail position. Okay, that was really embarrassing moment, but yeah, we'll stick that onto there, and now we'll also drop the level all the way down and put the same thing going on here. We don't want it to go all the way up because then it starts to um, to clip the sound, and then we have to turn on the master. So just kind of leave it around there. It keeps it keeps things a little bit more simple. You know what I'm saying? But into oscillator A, we're going to switch this to a mate to a uh, matrix -y C something four. Um, I think it's in here. Yep, yeah, matrix C C64. Yeah, that's I was right. I was right, boys. But anyways, we're gonna turn this wave tilt position all the way up. So yeah, that's uh that's sounding really sick, right? So we're gonna drop this oscill octave, not oscillator, octave up two. So we're running a um we're starting to get this metallic bass sound with the differential of the pitch. And from here we'll just turn down this, you know, maybe modulate this. Alright, so this is what I mean. We're going to pass the sub off of here because you guys are probably like, dude, this doesn't even sound nearly like a growl because it's starting to sound metallic and stuff. So, here we go. We are going to turn on our FM from the sub oscillator. And from here, we're just going to turn it up until we kind of find a sweet spot because um, changing the variable on this to a different percentage uh, kind of changes, oh, I'm sorry, changes the sound drastically. So um, just kind of finding that sweet spot. It doesn't really matter where exactly, but I'm going to leave this waveform to a sign and I'm just going to fix up this form a little bit. Make Maybe make a quick little growl form. All right, now we're starting to talk. It's just starting to sound a little better, right? Okay. All right, that sounds great. This is exactly what we're looking for. Um, so as you can see, this is what I meant by the human centipede of frequency modulation. We are um, we are running two signals. The first signal is going to be oscillator A, and the second is going to be the sub. So just kind of think of it like that. I don't know why that just helps me think of it better because it just it can get a little bit confusing. So I mean that could help a lot. Anyways, we're going to get into our filter now and we're going to be using a BN. 
right here, which I believe is a band notch. So we have our typical band pass filter mixed in with a notch. Well, a notch base or a notch filter just cuts out those lower frequencies, or um, it just kind of creates a, a negative peak like this. And well, as to the um, the band pass, cuts out both the low end and a high end in a form like that. But anyways, we're just going to turn this cut off pretty low for the band pass. And we're going to turn that make sure this is turned on for oscillator B because the oscillator B is outputting all of our sound. Remember that. So we're going to turn on our low frequency oscillator onto that cutoff and turn it to about. Now for this, it doesn't really matter too much. It's all about preference, like what you're trying to um, accomplish in the sound, it, like how open of a sound you want this to be. I'm gonna leave it about. I'm gonna leave it about there. So now, um, yeah, we'll turn up this resonance. Yes, kind of bring a heavier presence of the, onto the sound. Turn up the drive. So as you can see, when we start to move this notch, we're starting to get kind of like a growl basing sound. So ready? That sounds sick, right? So we might as well modulate that if it sounds great. So kind of stick that frequency modulation on there. Now we're starting to get somewhere. All right, so into the effects. Now the effects do can get a little bit tricky because really what's going on here is we, um, we're we changing up the order of this rack. So first we're going to turn on our filter because it's gonna be the first, like the most prominent um, feature or the first prominent effect. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna create a high pass filter. So if you guys heard in the original sound, there was, it sounded like um, the, the, the higher frequencies were a lot more prominent in the sound by itself like in the first um, the first like two c bars of the cycle um, here that, that sounds a little bit weird I worded that pretty bad but this is what I did I turned on the cutoff and then I turned on a low frequency oscillator onto the cutoff the second one not the same one as the first make sure you don't get that confused and then I went ahead put this on envelope and let's see I have this on one fourth so I just kind of changed this shape, turn this resonance up, and now uh, from here, um, you're not going to be able to hear it as good right now because we have been throwing on the effects to kind of crisp up the sound, but um, once we start to throw on the effects, you'll know what I'm saying. What it does is it kind of creates like a nice little crisping sound. Oh, now you can kind of hear it a little better. But anyways, um, yeah, that's going to bring us onto our hyper dimension. Um, we're actually going to be using this last, or kind of part to last, but um, we'll just kind of drop this down near the end here. And from here, we'll just kind of turn the detune quite up a bit. But when we do that, you know, start to get, starts to get a little bit too detuned. So we're just going to turn down that, or maybe turn up the mix. And the size is really throwing us off here. And from there, these effects, I'm sorry guys, I loaded on so many effects onto this sound, it's just out of control. So we're gonna throw on our phaser now. Rate all the way down, depth all the way down, frequency all the way down, and you guys know the drill for this because I did this in a lot of my growl sounds. What this does is it makes it sound like it's passing through guitar amp, so. See the difference, it sounds, insane insanely better really so the distortion is going to be the next function we're just gonna have tube but not up all the way because up all the way is gonna throw us off all right now we're starting to get somewhere okay so on to the next we're just going to go ahead and turn on our compressor we're gonna turn on on multiband and finally we're just going to turn on oh I put on turn on our delay turn um I'll put this on link so that way we just have to move one of these and both the left and the right will move at the same time and this is what kind of gives us that uh, getter kind of delay sound that he uses a lot so
Um, it's just kind of like that. I mean, that's what that's really all I did. I put a macro on there. And honestly, that's all it took to make the sound. Um, I hope that you guys took a few techniques away from this because I did introduce a lot more techniques into this tutorial. I know this tutorial was a lot more calmed down. A lot of people have been asking me to calm down in my tutorials. So that's what's happening. But if you guys like this tut, make sure you drop a sub, drop a like if you haven't already. And um, yeah, guys, I just want you to let want you to let you know I'm going to be, um, I don't know, this past weekend was just so crazy. I had a couple of festivals and stuff like it was pretty awesome though. Um, but yeah, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay subbed, and I'm Shane from Microsoft. I'm signing out.